<clears throat> my name is uh, Carl Smith. I'm from Broken Head and Chimpley Nation. And I worked with the Bedland Project since 1999, I believe we started. I belonged to an NGO group called Manto Model Forest at one time. <clears throat> and we had a TAC committee between four First Nations community in Little Black River, Hollow Water, Saguin, and Broken Head. So I was on the elders' uh, attack committee there because uh, we got to protect our area, for one thing, uh, preserve it, and uh, create awareness and educate people on the importance of wetland and all its functions, biodiversity, uh, animals, plants, trees, water, the most important thing. Uh, well, uh, in our community, prior to treaty, we had um, a very spiritual, traditional community at the time before the treaties. And prior to treaties, they had a place called Cedar Lake in this area. Uh, it's been just in the wetlands where maybe about a third of a mile east of the wetlands where it is right now. It's called Cedar Lake. That's where we had uh, the traditional people kept their ceremonies alive in language. And that's where the church couldn't get into because it was bog and a spiritual part of the community for three or three plus hundred years. So we always wanted to uh, share in the great awareness of First Nations uh, contribution to Mother Earth. <laughs> the, the boardwalk set up with the First Nation uh, teaching, so respect. And, uh, and that's where we got into the uh, part of respecting Mother Earth, respecting everything there. And then uh, from the respect, we thought about what kind of purpose was it intended to do. So the purpose was to, again, educate, create awareness. <clears throat> and then when we got to the other, thought about the balance of the area. What are we going to do with the balance? Like, there's a lot of this destruction around us, gravel pits, highways, <clears throat> water issues with the uh, public awareness campaign, I guess, about the importance of it and uh, why you stay on the trail. <laughs> if you stay on the trail, there's a reason for that. Okay, well, first I'll, I'll, I'll just talk a little bit about some of the scientific reasons for protecting wetlands. And, of course, we know that they, that they uh, are a, a great protector of water because they clean the water. All the plants that are in, in a wetland, they help to clean the water. Um, they are also, they sequester carbon, so they are, are very helpful for uh, climate change to prevent against cl climate change. Um, they also provide habitat for a myriad of different plants and animals and insects and birds and and everything like that. And, um, you know, just in general, like in Manitoba, we have lost so much of our wetlands. I think we have something like 1% of our wetlands left in Manitoba, which is shocking because we had so many wetlands. I mean, the amount of uh, water birds that we used to have here, you know, is, is drastically reduced. And that just, you know, reduces the biodiversity that you get, uh, which is so important for maintaining ecosystem. From a, a, a human point of view, you know, very, as people, more and more people grow up in cities, they've lost that connection to nature. And wetlands is one of those places where you can go and re-inspire yourself and get that connection to to the earth and to the land. There's so much work going on right now to protect Lake Winnipeg, but there's not nearly enough work going in to protect the wetlands that surround Lake Winnipeg. Right. <laughs> right? Exactly. So it seems like there, like there could be so much more conservation work happening if we would yes, continue would, doing that. All those wetlands protect the lake. Those wetlands are buffering Lake Winnipeg and, and clean the water before it goes into the lake. But yeah. one of the official que last questions I have is, yep. as someone who has been such a huge, has had such a huge impact on Deb Wendon and the uh, Brokenhead wetlands, what do you hope to see in the future for Deb Wendon and for uh, the Brokenhead Wetland Ecological Reserve? I guess, really, uh, for Deb Wendon itself, I, I, would, I would love to see it evolve into something a little bit bigger where, where we could afford to have someone in charge of programming so that we could achieve some of these goals. I really want it to be known for programming where we are teaching people about what is to be found in that wetland just because it's so rich, right? Not just the flora and fauna, but the indigenous.